Hey, good morning guys. Tosh coming at you. Friday, July the 13th and just coming up to 10 a.m. Another beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's going to be a hot one today. It's already 80 plus degrees out here. I think we're going up to about 95 today, somewhere around there, so we'll definitely have the fan going on in here. If you're a biker, Friday the 13th means you're going to Port Dover, so it's going to be an awfully hot day there for the bikers, but I'm sure they're going to enjoy it. Those crazy bikers, they'll drive in the wintertime if it's a Friday the 13th. So if you're interested in learning more about Port Dover, just Google it, Friday the 13th, Port Dover, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, where we left off was I had run out of wire for my MIG welder, so we made a trip to the store this morning. I picked up some wire, and I picked up some new Dremel uh, grinding discs. We'll add, uh, well, I picked up some gray primer because I wasn't a big fan of the black primer that I'd bought by mistake. So we'll add those items to the, uh, the board over there. Uh, these Dremels alone are quite expensive. Let me just pull out my receipt here. I always complain about the Dremel. Those two packs of Dremel uh, grinding discs were $27.98, but they're indispensable as far as I'm concerned in the restoration of this car. Primer was uh, $21.99, the uh, MIG wire was $13.99. Okay, I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant here. I'm going to sound like a bit of an old person, but uh, yeah, I had a bad experience at Canadian Tire this morning on a number of uh, fronts. First of all, they have the Dremel Easy Locks all hidden away in a glass showcase that you need to wait for somebody to come and open the showcase and then walk them up to the front for you. I hate that. That took about uh, five minutes for somebody to come and unlock the cabinet after me asking twice. Then I had the same situation happen when I was looking for batteries for my car remotes. Both my batteries have uh, worn down to the point where I'm getting a warning on my car saying change the batteries. So figured I'd pick some batteries up. Same scenario, glass showcase, wait for an associate to show up to open the case. So I probably spent about 15 minutes this morning just waiting for people to open uh, glass showcases to get products out because of shrinkage. <laughs> anyway, uh, then I go to checkout and there is absolutely no checkouts open. There's only a self-checkout. So I say to the manager on duty, I say, listen, I don't want to use a self-checkout. I don't want to take jobs away from people you know, where are your regular cashiers? Well, we don't have any. Are you sure you don't want to use the uh, self-checkout? And I said, no, I don't. Anyway, so that's, that's our only option at this point, debit and credit. We don't have a cashier on. So that upsets me. So talk about shrinkage. Well, your customer base is going to be shrinking. I'm not going back there. Mm -hmm. To make matters worse about this whole express checkout thing or self-checkout thing is they have a young lady there standing beside the machine to help you if you have an issue with your self-checkout. She says to me, can I scan those items for you? And I'm thinking, well, why wouldn't you just set yourself up at a cash register if you're going to be standing here assisting people to scan their items? The only difference is you don't have cash or a till to tend. So it doesn't make any sense to me that they still have somebody working at the self-checkout when they should be working at cash register. Okay, rant over. We're gonna get the uh, wire loaded in the machine and we'll continue on uh, fixing that area up in the, um, in the trunk here where we left off. Just over in the corner here where we tack that. It's kind of dark, there we go. Where we tack that piece in, we'll finish that up and then we'll look for another spot to repair. All right, guys, not sure when the last update was, but uh, we've got that patch done. We've got this hole fixed. We've got that hole fixed. We've got that hole fixed. I've created this bracket here, which will mimic this bracket. But for this side, I've just uh, scratched off the uh, epoxy, and we're going to locate that. And obviously, we'll uh, spray some primer underneath that before we do. So we'll go ahead and primer that up, and then we'll uh, mark it out, and we'll uh, plug weld that where it's supposed to be. Okay, before I repair that uh, little mount there, I'm going to take the seam sealer out of the corners here. I see a hole over here, so we'll remove the seam sealer there, and we'll finish removing the seam sealer over here. So I've got the heat gun out, and we'll just go to town, scrape all that out, make sure we don't have any holes there. All right, guys, we've got the uh, car sort of resituated. We're just about to flip it on its side so I can get to that uh, bottom wheel well drop over there. So everything else is uh, plugged up, I think, in the, uh, the trunk area except for that corner. So 
We'll finish that up and then we can call the trunk done except for obviously we need to do some body work in there. And as I mentioned, we're probably gonna spray the uh, Raptor liner in the trunk bed itself. Not the whole thing, just the actual bed. Anyway, uh, that's it for now. We'll uh, flip the car up and we'll come back in a little bit. All right guys, here's the next area that we're gonna repair. It should be an easy repair. It's gonna require me to replace this flange here at the back and just replace this metal here at the front. So anyway, we'll get out the, uh, the cutting wheel and we'll do a little exploration and uh, see where we get to. All right guys, here we are on this repair. So we've just cut the face out, we've cut the rear flange out. We've left a little bit uh, longer flange on the back here so we can attach this. And then we'll come back and we'll create a plate to cover the front. So we're gonna do that now. I've got the uh, pieces cut over here, so we'll just tack them in and we should be done. All right guys, that lower wheel arch is repaired. And uh, we may wanna do a little bit of grinding in behind here, but it's probably not necessary. It's gonna be under the car anyway and covered with Raptor liner, but we'll probably end up grinding it a little bit anyway. Don't know why, don't ask me why. And then in the inside, there's where the repair was done, and that looks really good. Little seam sealer there, and she'll be good to go. So I'm happy with that repair. Repaired a few other little holes I found along the way, including one over here. So that's done, and then we'll keep moving along. I think the next repair we're gonna do is up here in the front, and we're gonna replace this little bottom cap section. So we'll take a break. I haven't had lunch yet. It's 3.30, and I'm a little hungry. So we'll do that after lunch. All right, guys, here's the next two areas we're going to fix. So a little hole in the uh, wheel arch, and we've got this bottom cap here that needs to be repaired. Then there's a few little pinholes, one here, there's a couple here, one here. So we're hoping that we can fill those with some weld and not have to create a whole huge patch for them. This is a little bit lacy here, but we'll see what we can do there. All right, six o'clock update. Uh, a few more holes filled up. Not the prettiest uh, repair jobs, but they don't really need to be. They're on the bottom of the car. They're gonna be uh, covered with uh, fiberglass filler, and then some, probably some Bondo, and then some epoxy primer, and then some Raptor liner, so you'll never see those. So, uh, it looked not too bad on the inside. I did a little tiny bit of uh, grinding work in here. So that will be fine with a little bit of filler. And that's gonna look okay once I grind that down a little bit. So, yeah, it's coming along. The objective, and I don't know whether I'm gonna meet this or not, but the objective is basically to get this car finish welded, hopefully by tomorrow. So I can apply the uh, Raptor liner on the bottom. Well, actually I've got to, wherever I repair, I've got to do a little bit of filler work and there's areas where I want to do filler work regardless. So here, for example, I want to do some filler work because I don't think the Raptor is going to cover this. You're still going to be able to see it. Even here, you'll probably be able to see the welds a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do is a little filler work over here and then epoxy that and then Raptor liner over that. So I want to get all the welding done so I can do that in the next uh, couple of days um, because I'm going to try to do it within the window so I don't have to sand everything before I apply my Raptor liner. So running out of time for that seven day window so hopefully we can try to get that done in time to prevent us from doing a lot of extra work. Alright guys, just coming up to uh, 8.15 and we're going to start a new phase in the restoration of this car and that is going to be uh, body work, so filler work. And uh, as you can see I've stripped all of the uh, epoxy off around where I've welded and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually apply a thin coat of short strand fiberglass filler over my welds. I like to do that because the uh, short strand fiberglass is a waterproof versus uh, regular Bondo. So. I want to smooth out some of these areas. This area I didn't do. This was on the car previously, but I want to smooth this out. This is going to be Raptor liner, so you may not see a lot of these weld locations anyway, but I want to make sure, and I'd like to put a coat of uh, short sand fiberglass first. Well, then we'll sand that off. We'll do a quick uh, skim coat of uh, filler on top of that, and then eventually we'll epoxy primer back over, and then the top coat will be the Raptor liner. 
So uh, I'm not planning on doing any more welding in this location, so I think we're safe to apply the filler here. There are a few other locations where I'm still going to be doing some welding, so obviously if I'm applying filler, I've got to stay away from the heat. So this area is safe, so we're going to start here. All right, guys, just coming up to uh, 9.30, and we got uh, one quick uh, coat on the car. And yeah, just played around a little bit sanding, so it's, you know, it's just on here roughly. Um, I haven't even really sanded it down. I just, uh, I got one patch looking uh, much, much better already. There used to be a wild line underneath here, and you can see what I'm trying to accomplish by doing what I'm doing with the uh, short strand fiberglass. So anyway, we'll uh, spend the day out here tomorrow. We'll uh, do some more welding, and we'll do some more uh, filler work, and... Uh, like I said, the objective is to try to get this into Raptor Liner by the end of the weekend. See you later. Have a good night. Thanks for watching.